So can you tell us what are industrial control systems? What makes their cybersecurity special or important? Industrial control systems are the computers and processes um, and logic uh, that are used to manage um, the operations and safety of industrial systems. Um, so they touch everywhere um, about our lives. Every time you flip a switch to turn on the electricity, every time you flush a toilet, um, every time you take a uh, you know take some water from your tap, um, anytime you drive down the road and you see a manufacturing plant or you go to work in a manufacturing plant. Uh, those are all being operated by industrial control systems. And in many cases, we also use industrial control systems where humans, where it's unsafe for humans to be. Um, so in some of the most dangerous environments in the world, nuclear power plants, oil and gas operations, um, uh, some chemical manufacturing and so forth, we see industrial control systems being used instead of humans in order to uh, protect human life. The computer systems that literally underpin modern civilization. And what does the malware attacking them do? So we've seen examples of attacks uh, of malware that are specifically targeting control systems, aiming to disrupt the flow of electricity, for instance, which we saw with crash override. And then, of course, you have things like Trisys. This was targeting um, the safety equipment at a petrochemical oil and gas facility in Saudi Arabia. So this malware will effectively get into the operations environment, bridging the gap between IT and OT, um, and able to interact and potentially modify equipment, whether it is um, turning on and off electricity or protecting human life. So can you tell us a bit about what the humanitarian consequences of a, a cyber attack against industrial control systems could look like? There's really two major components here to a humanitarian issue around cyber, uh, around the cybersecurity of industrial control. The first is an availability question, which is if I can mess or uh, I can disrupt, say, um, sanitization systems, so water purification, um, sewage, um, things like that, then I can lead. It can lead directly to public health consequences. Um, another one is inside the industrial environments themselves. We see things like uh, like Trisis, which attacked the safety systems of an oil and gas refinery that would lead directly to um, the explosion or um, sort of destructive attack against an oil and gas facility, potentially costing the lives of hundreds of the employees uh, that are at the plant. Um, and then the Kind of like the the tangential side of things is that industrial control systems also protect the environment. Um, they will prevent uh, leakage of volatile chemicals or sewage into, uh, say, rivers or lakes or drinking water supplies. They will prevent volatile chemicals um, and gases from entering the atmosphere. Uh, potentially, that could expose um, harm or or kill large portions of populations. And then, of course, you have the potential generational impact of that environmental damage as well. So sometimes these sites where we have major industrial incidents cannot be habitated for, for um, you know, potentially decades or even longer, depending on the type of damage that was caused. And of course, this then uh, potentially causes a massive migratory issue. And so we have these both these primary effects of the safety of individuals and public health. And then we have these second order effects of the larger environment and cultural and um, societal impacts that industrial control system uh, attacks can cause. So how does the cyber threat against ICS in the Middle East measure against the rest of the world? Uh, what makes the threat in the region different? So the Middle East is very unique. Um, it has a, a lot of its economy that relies on um, industrial control systems and industrial processes, not just the Middle Eastern economy, but the global economy. Um, in fact, the Middle East accounts for about 30% of the world's global oil production. So you can uh, imagine potentially that a threat or an attack on um, oil production could have ripple, e ripple effects across the entire global economy because everybody is reliant on fuel. Um, additionally, uh, the Middle East is very unique because it has very, very large um, water desalination efforts. Um, they uh, are often pulling um, uh, water from the ocean, putting it through a lot of industrial processes that remove the salt and make it safe for drinking, um, potable water, let's say, um, and then distributing that to the communities. 
um, that's uh, unique in that, you know, if there is any sort of minor disruption to their, um, those processes, the communities, the citizens, um, and the folks that are living in these regions that rely on, you know, seawater potentially to turn into potable water uh, could have a very detrimental impact um, on their health and their lives.